GMI Hub Online. I'm Cheryl Duke, your host, and I'm so glad that you're here with us. If this is the first time that you are watching us, first of all, welcome. And I'd encourage you to hit the like button and that little bell button all right, uh, that's over in the corner there. And the reason for that is every time we are doing an episode like this we want you to be one of the first ones to be notified about it and not miss it so thank you for doing that as well if you want to know about gmi hub if you've never heard of us before feel free to visit our website we're at gmihub.ca which stands for gospel music industry hub gmihub.ca you can go there and you can check out all the different things that we are doing um, all the different projects the events uh, even learn about becoming part of the community there. You can certainly go ahead and check that out. You can also follow us on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and X. So feel free to go check those out. Uh, that should be scrolling along at the bottom. So feel free to go check us out there. I am so excited about our guest today. We have a guest who is multi-talented. She is not only a recording artist and singer, and a songwriter. She's also a voice actor and actress. She's just multifaceted and she's right here in Brantford, Ontario. So give it up for Marissa Nicole. Marissa, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's, I'm feeling very excited to be here. Yeah, we're excited too. We found out that we go back way back, right? But not as back as far back as your early childhood years, because <laughs> like, I want to talk about, like, I, I sat there and just was mesmerized by your history. Like, you started music before you hit double digits <laughs> in your <laughs> age. Like, you were seven years old, and you were already in a songwriting competition at seven, right? And yeah, won an yeah. award on top of that. Yeah. Talk to us about this. Talk to us about this. You won your first National Songwriting Award in at seven years old. Talk to us about this. What do you remember about that experience? And, you know, how did that shape your musical journey? It's so funny because I just remember very little about it. I remember winning the award and I, it was a piano uh, songwriting competition. And I remember walking down the aisle of the event and there's being so many people. So that's what I remember the most, walking down and looking around. There were so many people, you're so tiny and everybody's so big. And then I remember receiving the award and that's it. So my mom actually has a better memory of it than I do. Um, but I think what's really important is my, my mom loves music, everything music. And when she was young, she bought her first piano at 13. She bought it herself. She saved up her money and bought it herself. Mm -hmm. And then when I came along, I practiced on that piano. And so she kind of passed on her love for a piano and music to me. And what she tells me is that I was a little bit stubborn in wanting to practice. And, you know, you, every, you know, children, they want to watch TV. You want to watch cartoons, Inspector Gadget, Pink Panther. I'm probably showing my age <laughs> at that time. And um, I had to practice. You know, you had to do your hour, your half an hour a day. And so she was actually having a really hard time getting me to just focus up. And she told the piano teacher that... Um, she was going to pull me out because, you know, she just couldn't get me to focus up. And the piano teacher already knew that I had won. So she was like, no, 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 don't pull her out. Just hang on in there. Every kid has this, you know, has a transition time. Just kind of stay there and just let's see what happens. And then she says, okay, she listened to the Moonbeams instructor. I was in Sunbeams and Moonbeams. And um, within a few weeks, I had won the competition. So that gave me the confidence boost that I needed. It gave her the assurance that she needed to know that she had put me in the right space. And that's, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> wow, wow. Now at the same time, or I don't know if it was at the same time, but again, during your childhood, you also entered into the acting side too. So it wasn't just the piano and the music. Now you were in musicals you were in choirs and stage plays. I mean, you mentioned your mom, like your mom seemed to be, was she very strong behind all the acting as well or <laughs> just the music? Yeah, she was behind both. I think what I really love about my family is that when my myself and my siblings, when we say um, we want to do something, my brother and I, she was always like, okay, let's try it. Everything, she's like, let's try it. So, you know, I wanted to do music 
And she said, okay, piano first before singing. Um, that worked out in my favor. And I said, I want to try acting. And she said, great, let's try that. She said, I want to try ballet. I tried that. Obviously, I'm not a dancer, so that didn't work. <laughs> so, you know, I really appreciated that about her. Everything I said I wanted to try, she allowed me to try. And so that's how I got into acting and, and piano and singing is that I just said, mom, can I try? And she said, yes. And so we did that. And for all of my um, like elementary years, I was shuttling down my family was taking turns showing me downtown you know when it wasn't my mom it was my grandfather it was my grandfather it was my grandmother it was my aunt everybody had a turn taking mercy to acting classes so it was really great oh my word that's amazing <laughs> now now with your piano lessons like you were classically trained is that correct that is correct yeah. royal conservatory Royal Conservatory. So how does that shame now? I'm, I'm kind of fast forwarding a little bit. How has mm -hmm. that experience uh, shaped your songwriting? How has that influenced your songwriting or has it had any influence on your songwriting? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it has had influence on my songwriting in terms of I can accompany myself. I have the confidence to accompany myself on keys. I have the confidence to create my own demos. Usually when I create a demo, it's, it's almost Aside from mixing and mastering, we don't take away from the producers. They do an excellent job, the recording engineer and, and all that stuff. But essentially, I can, you know, play what I want. I can play from beginning to the end. I can find harmonies. I can, you know, almost construct a very basic demo because I have piano skills. I can sit the piano and, and write a song basically because of that. And I play for the church as well. So I'm a worship leader and I also play for the church and sing for the church. So I'm able to do that. I'm able to give back to and serve back in my church community. So I do think it played a integral, uh, very instrumental role um, to me, having the confidence and having the skills I need to be able to create songs. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So now we're transitioning. I now uh, you haven't always been in Canada. You also went to the U.S. and did a few things. Yes. correct. Yeah, right. right. you're right. You're right. So, <laughs> okay, so you went to the U.S. Um, and you got involved with television. Am I correct on this? <laughs> oh yeah. Um, to clarify, I went to the U.S. for a tour. So I did a oh, okay. musical theater tour. Um, across Canada and across the U.S. for about a year and a half, if I'm not mistaken, just just shy of a year, a year and change. Um, and so that was where my time was spent, um, where I did a lot of uh, um, uh, visiting theaters and again, doing it for the tour was called We Will Rock You. Um, so I did that for a year and a half. So that's when I went to the States. I went to the States as well for when I produced my first EP out of Nashville, Tennessee. Um, so more music and acting, but more musical theater and, and music is what I did in the U.S. Yes. Ah, and you did your first album release there. Is that right? In the yes, that's correct. The, the hit single, that's right, What yes. If. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Of you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> There's still time. Okay. <laughs> There's still time, yes. So your first hit, What If? Okay, so talk about that creative process with, with that song. The for, This is your first release, okay? And you yeah, were, yeah. what, 20 years old, roughly, when, when yeah, that came out? Early teens, yeah. Early um, teens, so, so that, talk to us about that. Yeah, late teens, sorry. But yeah, early early 20s, late teens, yes. Um, but that song was... Um, it's so funny. I wrote that song just kind of just singing out loud and just thinking about the importance of us being the light of the world, no matter where we go. Um, and it kind of all came together on its, on it, I want to say on its own. Sometimes songs come and I just feel like I didn't write that. You know, I feel like I just opened my mouth and the Lord just delivered it. He was like, what servant was available today? Oh, Marissa's available, you know? It was too easy for me to take claim. Like, and I can't take claim for that. I feel the Holy Spirit wrote that 100%. I just happened to be available or awake even. Yeah. Um, yes. So I give God thanks for that. And that song really took off. Like everybody relates that song. I remember that people were messaging me saying that they were doing Bible studies around that song. 
um it made it all the way to the caribbean yeah that was that for me was really impactful i was like oh that's amazing and they had sent me the scripture they they had used the church to to um uh combine with that song and uh it was playing in the lower parts of the u.s and playing all over canada and uh, it brought me to grace television at that time um again it was in the caribbean it just it really exploded in a way that i didn't anticipate um but i feel so grateful to god for the opportunity to be able to you know go to nashville produce that out of my heart again mom being my number one support my brother being my number one support mom i want to go okay you know like she just very much was really behind that you know <laughs> she was great like that and then having that opportunity kind of allowed me just to push forward and and go forward you know when i wrote that song i was saying the, the chorus says what if we are the only jesus people see a song with the power can change many hearts but if we hide it we deny him but the actual first lyrics again i was late teenage i said a song in the shower can change many hearts but what i was trying to say is that you know just just seeing from your heart you know, in the shower, it can just make a big difference if you open your mouth. And when I brought it to the producer, he's like, oh no, we can't do that. You got to change it. So <laughs> he's like, you can't do that. And I said, you know, I, I'm trying to say that the simple things make the difference. But of course, you know, you're dealing with professionals and they understand. And I appreciate that redirection. But to show you like where my heart was at and how young I was um, and what I was really trying to accomplish. So I always thought that was interesting. Yeah. And I'm glad you shared that because you know what? There are people that are watching right now that are songwriters and mm -hmm. talk about the importance of, you know, taking your first lyrics, you know what you're trying to say, but having yeah. other people come alongside you and say, you know, I know what you're trying to say, but let's not talk about the shower because that's right, a whole right. Lot, you know what I mean? <laughs> Let, let's try and word that another way to get the same right. impression, right? But but that's awesome though, that you had that input in your life. I think that's just, I, that's just absolutely awesome. And so important for us to recognize that, you know, songs, first of all, don't just come, um, you know, and, and we're not the experts of our own songs. Sometimes it's like you said, it gets downloaded because it's yeah, what's yeah. available and then and then you're going god am i getting it right and, you know, yeah. and then someone helps you interpret it a little bit better exactly <laughs> right? exactly so it's so awesome like that is just yeah i love that i love that so much um now did you do any voice acting down in the states too or you just just mostly did the music no just the music the voice acting is is here in canada of course the shows are all over but no the yes. just music in the states yes ah okay awesome awesome mm -hmm. let's talk about um now let's talk about your faith obviously okay. you are a believer um how does your faith influence your creative process um and the messages that you want to bring forth talk about your heart behind your music yeah, my faith is the foundation of just who I am. Um, I think I gave my heart to the Lord at a very young age. At five years old, I gave my heart to the Lord. I was enrolled in a Christian private school for the very first years of my life. Um, and so I was just always surrounded by, by Christ and, and the church. And I love that. I tell people that the church gives life skills. You know, it really does empower you as a young person. Of course, we grow up and we remember doing plays and Easter plays and, and, and things of that nature. And that's where that practice begins. Choir, children's choir, groups, all of that. That's where that practice begins. So having that really sure foundation in Christ at such an early age told me what direction that I should go in. And I was grateful for it. You know, I love the Lord, you know, and I want to point people to Christ and point people to the church and so they can see how awesome his love is and how gracious he is and how beautiful the church community is and, and what the church community provides. It provides family, it provides, you know, financial help sometimes when you need it. It provides emotional support, you know, it provides, again, like I said, life skills for your children to find what they're, where they ought to be and where you ought to be. Um, and so just having that foundation really helped me navigate my purpose and my destiny. I believe that God gives purpose and he brings destiny. He tells you what to do and 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 I'm, I'm grateful for that. And so it kind of directed me in where I wanna go. And now when I write songs, I don't write it without him. 
You know, I always tell people the best way for me to write songs is in devotion time. Um, Cause I'm just, it's me and him and we're having that one-on-one -on -one conversation and um, with his word. And he's just telling me, you know, you know, this melody goes here and this sounds good here. And, and I'm singing it, I'm opening a scripture and I'm just singing it. And I'm just like, this is beautiful. But I can do that because of the foundation that I have in him, because I have committed myself to him because of where I began and because of, you know, the heart he has given, you know? And so I'm really grateful for that. Ah, oh, beautiful. That is beautiful. Now you have mm -hmm. some, some phrases that you tend to use often. Mm -hmm. And one okay. is um, something to do with perfection. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just trying to find that one. Perfection doesn't live here. That's it. That Perfection one? doesn't live here, but it's grace. Grace, grace. grace does, though. Yes. Yep. Grace does. <laughs> Do you grace has full time yourself? residence. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, I, I found that I, I'm relating this a little bit to songwriting because as songwriters, it's very easy to get to the place where we will write, rewrite a song or we'll arrange and rearrange a song. And mm -hmm. we will, um, you know, we will you know, go to the um, studio and, oh, that's not good enough because we're striving mm -hmm. for perfection, right? Yeah. But, but does perfection ever come, right? And I feel like yeah. your phrase kind of says, perfection doesn't always come. Excellence, yes. Mm -hmm. Perfection, no. But grace, grace is always there. Grace is always mm -hmm. there. I don't know if that's what you meant by that phrase. I mean, I should actually ask you what you meant by your phrase. <laughs> no, that's okay. I really uh, like the way that you applied it to music. I was like, that's beautiful. I might just take that because I, I more meant like my life, but I actually really like how you applied to songwriting. And I think you kind of just shared something with me to actually thank you. Um, You're welcome. Because that's really great. Yeah. <laughs> See, iron sharpens iron here. That's what we do, you know? Come on. Come I love on. that. So I, I actually appreciate how you said it. I think a lot of the times, yeah, we as creatives, we definitely can stop ourselves from doing something or releasing something or going forward because we have this idea of perfection. And it's less about perfection. It's more about excellence, like you said. And it's more about maturity, maturing in your gift, maturing in your craft, you know, honing your craft. That's what it's about. You know, if we sit there and wait for perfection, we'll never get there, you know, in terms of, of creativity. And and you can't exhaust music. There's just so much to do. And there's there's so many things to do creatively that you can't exhaust music and you can't exhaust God, we know. So you're never going to get to perfection. But what you are going to get to is, is like I said before, maturity, being mature in your craft, being better in your craft, honing your craft, and along the way, sharpening your craft. And I think we should not allow, because I'm guilty of that, allowing perfection to say, you know, I don't, I don't like this. And, you know, this doesn't sound good. or This is not the way that I wanted. But if I did that, like, what if would have never come out? You know what I mean? Like, and I wouldn't be here now. I see the difference in my songwriting from before. Like now I'll never write about the shower now because I get it. Right. Yeah. But it took me actually just going out and putting it out there and not being afraid of being imperfect. Right. To now right. I'm here and I know how to write the skills to write you know what's appropriate what's not appropriate so perfection can really really stop you and as artists we really have to get over that the bible says um if a farmer waits for a specific season the farmer will never plant and they will never harvest it's in proverbs and i'm paraphrasing and so i use that for myself as well if you are waiting for the perfect season if you are waiting for this perfect time you'll never plant if you never plant, you will never harvest. If you never harvest, you will never reap. So you're going to be in the exact same position you were in while you're waiting. So it's very important just to plant. That's it. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I know from personal experience, I've been told that too. It's yeah. you're not going to be successful unless you start. That's <laughs> right. right. That's what That's I've been right. Told. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I love I love your application much better more more <laughs> just, I love it. <laughs> All right, let's talk about your latest release. Um, okay. Ready to receive. Talk to us about the story behind that song. 
Um, and, and there's something else I, I thought that, that I'm really attracted to is the, the collaborative co collaboration that you've got with this too. So talk to us about ready to receive. Yeah. Okay. I'm very excited. So I, it's my new release. It just came out a few weeks ago. Um, and I wrote that song a couple years ago, actually. Um, I love it cause I wrote it in, in my church, in my home church. And the first line is we stand in this sanctuary. And that's because I was literally standing in the sanctuary. <laughs> I was on the altar when I wrote that song and I was like, oh, well, that's where I am. I'm going to write that down. Um, and so I love that it represents that. And when I finished the song, I remember thinking, oh, this is not going to be a one voice song. There's just no way. This song requires a body of believers. It requires people from all over. It requires many voices. I don't know why I thought that years ago, but I really, really wanted to have multiple people on this track. And so when I first tried, because I tried to release it the first time, I had contacted multiple people and then, you know, like things happen, things happen, things fall through. I was still very young, so trying to put, to put together a track, it was a lot of work. Um, and so when I brought it around the second time, my heart was still the same. And I love that because that told me that I understood the assignment for the track, that my heart didn't change towards it. And um, I reached out to everybody who I have a relationship, all these people that I invited on this track, you know, we're friends, you know, I talked to them uh separately we talk collectively sometimes i just got off the phone with one of them before i got on this interview <laughs> again um so we're very close um and i was prayerful about it of course i asked the lord first and i and then i reached out to everybody i reached out to brooke nichols uh christopher samuels michael manhurts melina deluku uh trey dahani and everybody gave a resounding yes everybody understood the vision i said it's important for the our canadian industry to see that we are united you know yes. canada christian music canada gospel music canadian gospel music canadian christian music we are united as one there is power in unity you know yes. that's what heaven looks like you know the purpose of this song is actually to give god glory number one of course but to inspire mm -hmm. other collaborations of this nature to bridge that That's gap, fun. you know, to know that we can move forward together. And so that was really, that is really the purpose of this song. Of, of course, aside from giving the Lord glory and pointing to Jesus, to people to Jesus. Um, and so that's that's why I did it. And and everybody everybody said yes. Everybody I have their their own story with. Everybody's got their own story where we've come together in some way. And so it was very sentimental i'm a very sentimental person so it was very heartwarming to see it all come together because i have relationships with everybody and i have stories with everybody I meant to see everybody in the room and just having a good time like when we made the music video it was like a family reunion we couldn't stop laughing <laughs> like the uh, music <laughs> video producer he was like okay focus focus because like we were just like <laughs> having the best time so you know i i really um it's this song is dear to my heart because of what it represents beautiful and i love the fact that you know i i you mentioned all the names and i love the fact that that you said it represents heaven because it does everybody yeah. has a different background a different talent a different voice and right. um and and I can just imagine this is like the Christian version of we are the world that existed many, 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 many years ago, you know, <laughs> um, yeah. and you said, and the video is already out. The video is already out or it's coming out. No, it's out. It's out. Out and about. It's out. Okay. So is it on YouTube? Like, where can we see this video? Yes, you can see it on YouTube under my um, YouTube channel, Marissa Nicole. You just type in Marissa Nicole, ready to receive. Or you type in Marissa Nicole on YouTube. My YouTube channel will pop up and you can view ready to receive. That is amazing. You guys got to check that song out and check that video. I haven't seen the video. I only knew the song okay. was out. So I'm going to check out the video. <laughs> yes, and let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts. Well, you know what, knowing that our heart here is about unity, community, mentorship, and talent growth, girlfriend, I think I'm going to love it. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, so, okay. So now let's talk about, there's so much to talk about. <laughs> I know. Um, there's so much to talk about. Um, 
we talked about ready to zoom. Okay, so now let's talk about looking ahead. Now we've we've got actually not looking ahead. What feedback have you gotten since you've released Ready to Receive before I leave that song? What feedback have you gotten about that song already? It's since been it's really released, positive. Which is, yeah. Yeah, it's it's been really positive and, and I'm I'm so grateful to God for that. You know, I, I love that a lot of other artists have reached out to me and said, you know, this was a really good idea. Like good on you for doing that. And I'm like, really, it was the Lord, but I appreciate that. Um, so I love that it's inspiring our community first, like our music community, our artist community first. Um, and then I love that it's inspiring the people, you know, so many I had one individual message me and tell me that the song has been on repeat for two days straight and i was like that's, that's amazing. yeah that's amazing i'm like what like i can't believe it and <laughs> the individual told me that her and her part her and her husband took that song to like they were driving to um out out west out east out east um mm -hmm. like new brunswick nova scotia area and they said they just the whole way the whole way uh, and i'm like that is really inspiring for an independent artist my, like myself to hear something like that because we need yeah. that positive feedback we need that positive reassurance and and encouragement you know it gets really lonely mm -hmm. at times it gets really like am i doing the right thing should i be doing this you know and so with the mm -hmm. feedback that i have been receiving and i'm so grateful to our canadian community out here and and even some people across the states you know it it pushes you forward. It pushes you forward. It tells you, yes, you know, you're on the right path. So everything's been really positive. People love the music video. Uh, they love the behind the scenes that I'm posting on, on my Instagram and social media, because, you know, it's always funny to see, you know, what's going on, how the jokes that are running and, you know, all the laughter and love that's happening. And um, yeah, it's, it's been nothing but positive feedback. I'm really grateful to our community. Oh, that's wonderful. And you said something that was very, very important that I want to highlight, which is people are playing the song on repeat. If you are a music fan or a music enthusiast, don't think that you have no part in the music scene at all. You have a very important part. And yes. Melissa just said it right now. She says, it's such an encouragement when you take her music like ready to receive and other music that's created by other Canadian artists. And you play the songs over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know why? And when, and you let them minister to you because those songs were downloaded on to, to these artists as well. And they weren't meant to be downloaded for their own purpose. They were meant to be downloaded, to be shared and that's to right. bless other people. And so I want to encourage you that if you are a music enthusiast, you'll find those artists and and play their music. If you don't know where to find them, go to Spotify, visit GMI Hub. Uh, we have a GMI Hub radio um, platform and go check that out. We have a whole lot of artists right there, a lot of, their, a lot of Canadian artists that are listed right there that you can start mm -hmm. listening to their music and replaying it, hitting it, repeat over and over and over again. Why? That encourages them. They'd like to know. And see, you may not be able to phone them, go, hi, by the way, I'm listening to your song, but they will get a report from Spotify and from their music right. distributor saying, your song was being played on repeat over and over and over and over again. So they will get to notified of this. So you music enthusiasts, I want to encourage you. Don't feel you don't have a part. You play a very important part. And thank you for Marissa saying that, that you, you as an artist were so encouraged to know that the song was being played on repeat over and yeah. over and over again that that enthusiasts were loving it artists are loving it and and, and i pray that you know, this is probably the first one I've learned of that has had this collaboration. I pray other collaborations like that will happen. Yes. You know? Yes. I pray they would. And and maybe they are happening, but I love the fact that you had so many people involved. And like you said, you wanted it had to have many voices because it's supposed to represent heaven. You know, and I love the fact again, like everybody you mentioned all have different backgrounds. Uh, culturally, um, you know, and, and even by their experience, by their voices, just, I love the fact that you did that. So praise God for what he's done through you on that song. Amen. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Beautifully said.
let's talk now about what, what's next. Okay. You've done this big, big project, which is obviously doing very, very well. I'm going to check out that video. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but let's look ahead now. Like what, what are the thoughts of, of, uh, next steps, next projects is, are you doing any more new songs? Um, have you been downloaded? Has any other new projects down been downloaded? Um, or are you going to focus more on your acting? Like, talk to us about that. What's, what's your thoughts on that? Oh, there's so much coming up and I'm so excited for what's to come. And God has been really good in that. This is a single coming from an, a project that's coming out. So there is a project coming out called Ready, um, Ready to, to Receive. It's definitely the title. It's, it's taking from the title of Ready to Receive. So the project is called Ready. It's coming out later this year. And I am very excited about that. I, I, it, it really represents kind of the, the season that I feel like I am in. And I know the season that I feel like others have testified that they're in. And so I think it's a great representation of, of, you know, Christendom in terms of like ready to hear from God, ready to receive from the Lord, you know, ready to hear that word go, ready to, you know, get that instruction from the Lord. I think it's a, it, it, it's a good representation of the season that we're in as a community as well. And so that's coming out later this fall uh, with a few tracks on there, definitely some new tracks on there. I have a, a single from there again that's coming out in the next two weeks titled He awesome. Knows My Name. Um, oh, and wow. so, yeah, that will be, that is, is right now. I really like that song. Um, I won't speak to it cause it hasn't come out yet, but that song's coming out soon. Um, so in terms <laughs> of music, we've got one more project coming out and then I hope to be able to worship with the saints. You know, I released a, an album last year and now I'm releasing one this year. I feel that's a, that's a lot of music out. And now I just want to just visit churches and tour and just sing with the saints. Like that's kind of the goal. Um, upcoming next, God willing. Um, in terms of acting, I don't know if you want me to talk about what's coming up for acting as well. Or you just want to keep it. Okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah. sure. You're multifaceted. It's all about the arts. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, you know, that's, that's what's going on for music in terms of acting. I do have a new uh, animation project out right now titled Lila in the Loop, where I play mom. And um, mm -hmm. I have a few more animation projects that are coming out, I'm working on a few more shows as well that are coming out within the next uh, year. And so I'm very excited about that. Of course, I can't speak too much to it, um, but I would love for people to look out for that. If you stay locked to my page and you've got children and chickadees and they love, you know, all things cartoon, then they're going to love these upcoming shows that are coming out. We're working very hard on them. Um, it's been a blessing um, to be a part of them and to lend my voice to them. And, and I'm excited about what is going to come out of that. So, yeah, that's what's happening in the voice acting world. And that's what's happening in the music world. Awesome. So Lila in the Loop, where is that played? What stations are that? Uh, that's on PBS. What stations? Oh, PBS Kids. Okay. <laughs> it's on PBS Kids. Like, I don't know what that is for ca like Canada. I think we have like... It's we do w have access to PBS. Yeah, okay. In some way, okay. I know that we do. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, that's playing on PBS because it came out earlier this year. We had new episodes just drop just at the top of fall, and the reception has been fantastic. You know, it's a beautiful awesome. display of a Black family and how they navigate the world, and I think it, it's really relatable. I think everybody should watch it. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. That is yeah. awesome. So, new music a new program voiceover like ah uh, you are so talented <laughs> so multifaceted thank you so much thank you Mr. Sir, for sharing this and being with me it's been so awesome you know connecting and learning more about you and all the all that you're doing um if you want to know more about marissa nicole she has a website which is marissa nicole.com and i'm gonna spell it out for you it's M O -R -R -I -S -A -N -I -C -O -L -E. <laughs> 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 that's perfect uh, 
<laughs> just make sure that you go check her out you'll you'll learn all about her music all her projects you can read up about her i believe you can so you can also reach out to her she has a contact page if you want to reach out to her and encourage her and and ask her questions feel free to do that as well a reminder again if you want to know about gmi hub and learn more about us check us out at gmihub.ca and you can find out about what we're doing all the projects that we're working on and um and you can also follow us on social media we are on facebook instagram TikTok, x and youtube and this is and if you're on youtube of course remember to like and subscribe so you can tune into conversations like this and be encouraged i thank you so much for being with us today and i hope you have a great rest of the week until next time bye for now